All right, so thank you to those in the previous Canucks video who commented Swedish IKEA meatballs, anything in that nature. If you want a chance to be featured in the next Canucks video, then stick around to the end of this one. But we're talking about Nate Schmidt again. And the reason we're talking about this, I'll be very upfront as to why we're talking about this, is because I saw this Reddit post on the Hurricane subreddit. And you may be thinking, okay, why are you going out there on the Carolina Hurricanes bunch of jerks subreddit over there, Lego? If you're looking for a real answer, it's because it's part of the multi subreddit that I have that encapsulates all of the NHL subreddits that I scroll through every single day, and there was this post made on the platform for the Carolina Hurricanes titled this. A Nate Schmidt pre-arranged trade before the deadline? This is the little thing here. Thomas Drance of The Athletic Vancouver reported earlier on in the week that he suspected there was a deal in place for Nate Schmidt following the deadline that was waiting, because the team who would have made the deal didn't want to mess up its protection list. This post then goes and says, okay, I have a gut feeling it might be the Hurricanes, whatever, whatever, that's not really what we're talking about here. I tried looking for a source for Drance talking about this specific thing. Nate Schmidt, there's already a trade in place, but it's on hold because they're waiting for the expansion draft and everything to pass up before they get it done. I tried to look for it, I couldn't really find it, but aside from this little idea, I stumbled across a few other Nate Schmidt little tidbits that I wanted to highlight here in this video, just giving another update to the Canucks and their Nate Schmidt situation. Now, the biggest update comes earlier on last week, and it comes from the man up top himself, Benning. He had himself a press conference where he spoke to the media about Nate Schmidt. He actually spoke about a whole bunch of other things, but Schmidt was one of the highlighted topics of discussion, and the big update that Benning gave was actually written out here on a Sportsnet article. It's a Q&A with Benning himself, published by Ian McIntyre. You can see right here in the middle of the piece, after reports that both the team and player may be looking for a trade, can you bring us up to date on the Nate Schmidt situation? Benning says, There is no Nate Schmidt situation. Teams call us about our players all the time, and sometimes that gets out there. But he hasn't asked to be moved, or anything like that. And so, this was from July 15th, earlier on last week, and the update pretty much is there's nothing going on here. No situation, teams are asking about him, but he hasn't made a trade request. Okay, is that all there is to it? Well, I don't know, because we had ourselves Elliot Friedman a little bit later after this interview was published, saying that the Canucks are still trying to trade Schmidt. They were trying to bring back Edler too, but eventually after Friedman said this, it was Edler whose agent came out and said, yeah, we're going to free agency, so they're not going to keep Edler around. As for Travis Hamannick, Friedman said he's not sure how deep the Canucks have gone in those negotiations. Furthermore, also a day after the Benning interview, Ian McIntyre said this, Per reports, the only way the Canucks contemplate signing a UFA like Zach Hyman or Jaden Schwartz is to move money. This is why Nate Schmidt is a fascinating trade piece. If they trade him after the expansion draft, his $6 million could be largely reallocated at the forward position. We also then had Jim Benning say that the Canucks are trying to move some money. This is a report published by Patrick Johnston on that same July 16th. We'll take a look at what Benning said and look at the comments over here. The next 24 hours combined with what's going to happen in the expansion draft combined with what's going to happen in free agency, it's going to be interesting. Benning then acknowledged that the team is trying to make a trade, as they are trying to move some money, he said. And so now, you take a look at everything that has gone down. First, it was Jim Benning saying that there is no Nate Schmidt situation. The guy doesn't want to be traded. You gotta remember, though, that's all he said. He did not say in any respect that the Canucks are not trying to trade Schmidt. He just said that Schmidt himself does not want to be traded, which is a completely separate thing. Friedman then said later in the week that the Canucks are still trying to trade Schmidt, despite the fact that there appears to be no Schmidt situation. Then you have Benning also saying that the team is still trying to move money, and that the expansion draft and the free agency period makes things a little bit complicated. Which brings us back to the original idea we were discussing at the beginning of this video, as to whether or not the Canucks might have a predetermined Nate Schmidt trade already laid out that would just take place after the expansion draft because teams would not want to acquire a player right before the deadline, which was on Saturday, 
just to protect that guy and eventually send somebody else away to Seattle that would have been protected instead. We had seen situations like this come about with other NHL teams. The biggest one in my mind that stands out is Troy Stetcher with Detroit. If you hadn't seen, Troy Stetcher, former Vancouver Canuck, is indeed an unprotected piece by the Red Wings. Why? Well, it's not because he's bad. In fact, many Red Wings fans are upset that Stetcher will probably be the guy that Seattle takes from Motown. The reason they had to expose Stetcher is because they made the Nick Letty trade a few days before, and they had to protect Letty, the new guy they got instead. With Vancouver, they had to immediately protect Jason Dickinson after acquiring him from the Dallas Stars. And because of that, hey, guess what? You have yourselves an unprotected list that has the normal guys, Erickson, Beagle, Roussel, they're all there. But you also have McEwen and Cole Lind on that list too, meaning that the Seattle Kraken might not take Holtby, they might take one of the younger forwards on this club. And in fact, that opens a whole nother door of possibilities with the Vancouver Canucks and moving money, as per Jim Benning's quote. Maybe Benning trying to move money isn't directly tied with him trying to move Nate Schmidt. Maybe there's a trade in place with Seattle that says, okay, Seattle, you can take this pick. Take this draft pick right here as long as you take Erickson, or as long as you take Roussel, or as long as you take Beagle. Heck, we'll give you Beagle and this other better draft pick if you just take Antoine Roussel or an Erickson or whatever. There are other options here for the Vancouver Canucks to try to use the Seattle Kraken to move money that way. Moving money isn't exclusive to trading some of the most expensive pieces on your roster, and Nate Schmidt is definitely one of those guys. So it makes total sense to me if other teams would have gone out there and said, you know what, Schmidt is a good guy, I want to acquire this guy for my hockey team, but we don't want to be susceptible to a Troy Stetcher Nick Letty situation like Detroit is facing if we acquire Schmidt now. So maybe there is some truth to the idea that the Canucks would just have a trade idea put in place, as highlighted by Ian McIntyre, to potentially allocate some of the money that they have at forward via free agency. Now, there's another entirely philosophical debate to happen there as to whether or not you would rather have Schmidt, who doesn't want to be here or a Jaden Schwartz or a Zach Hyman instead. We already spoke about Zach Hyman and the Vancouver Canucks. We haven't spoken about Jaden Schwartz yet, but I do plan on getting that done sometime in the next few days too. It's just really interesting at this time because Nate Schmidt, if it's true that he really doesn't want to be here, some may say that that is enough fuel to the fire to just get him out of your dressing room. This is what Yannick Hansen said about Nate Schmidt on Sportsnet 650 the other day. If he wants out, get rid of him. You don't want that kind of guy in your dressing room. Hansen also said, though, about the entire defensive situation, the gap between your number one D and your bottom pair is big. The Canucks have four to five great bottom pair defensemen, but they need so much more. I like Schmidt as a number four, but if he's playing like a number two, you are in too deep. And so now, it's even gotten to a point where it's like, okay, even if he does want out, can you afford to lose a guy like Nate Schmidt? Can you go into the 2021-2022 season with Myers and whoever else is on your roster on the right side? Schmidt, if he's going to be gone, okay, we're not talking about Schmidt anymore. Hamannick, not going to talk about him. He's a free agent. Maybe he doesn't even re-sign. Rafferty, same thing. What's going on with the right side of the Vancouver Canucks decor? What are we going to have to do? Get Jet Wu in here playing top four minutes? I don't want to do that to a rookie, especially one of Jet Wu's caliber. He's no Quinn Hughes out here. So... Things are getting really complicated with the Vancouver Canucks and their defensive situation, and I know it's easy to say, Lego, you're making such a big deal out of this, come on, Jim Benning already said that there's no Nate Schmidt situation, so why are you even talking about this? Hey, we're talking about this because it's a big deal. I get that Benning said it himself, there's no Schmidt situation, but like, come on, when have NHL GMs been 100% honest in the past? It's never been like that, so we still have the right to go out there and doubt and maybe make our own proposals and talk about ideas going back and forth, especially since Friedman has himself, probably Sportsnet's best insider and analyst, is saying, yeah, the Canucks are still trying to make this move, so I'm going to believe there are a whole bunch of other sides to the coin that we haven't had publicized yet. So talk to me in the comments what you think about Nate Schmidt and the entire situation here. The Canucks trying to move him, maybe trying to move some other pieces of money outwards as well, trying to get some cap space to sign Hyman or Jaden Schwartz or whatever. It's a whole bunch of stuff going on in Vancouver land right now. But talk to me in the comments what you think either way. If you made it to the end of this video, then comment in the comments below the Beauty League, because yes, Schmidt himself is participating in the Beauty League again with Brock Best or two, so that's pretty good to see there. Talk to me in the comments, though, again, what you think. Hope you enjoyed this Visage Rolls 99. And bye.